uh, we are super pumped up to introduce Emmanuel Shu. Of course, um, if you don't know Eman's work, he has worked on Blade Runner and Terminator and literally every Marvel movie out there. And today he is kind enough to join us to share a little bit about um, how a professional concept artist works within blockbuster movies. Um, so feel free, of course, in the chat to, um, to chime in with any questions you have, um, any, uh, any thoughts or comments. Um, we are here to be a resource for you. Um, I, of course, am Banks, uh, co-founder of Kitbash 3D with my good buddy and partner, Max Berman. Um, and let's get into this, E-Man. So tell us, E-Man, what are the, there, there are three sort of stages to concept art in the movie business, right? Yeah. So, you know, usually when you start a film, uh, there's the, uh, the pitch phase, which is, you know, where they pitch and they try to get uh, money to fund this movie. Uh, so usually when they pitch, they need, uh, you know, they need art uh, to do that. So that's pitch phase. And then there's the pre-production art phase. Um, and that's when they, uh, you know, when you're actually working on the designs uh, and working with a production designer to get, you know, things built, uh, get things figured out. And then there's the post-production side, uh, which is the VF visual effects concept art side. So those are the three main areas that, uh, concept artists would probably be involved in. So yeah. we have the area before before the movie is greenlit. We have once the movie is ready to go and you're trying to pre-production get the guys into the game and then right. after the movie's been shot the VFX side of things. Exactly, yes. Um, and so then in today I thought it'd be cool if we talk about each of those stages in, in sort of three steps. There's how do concept artists get hired for each step? Because it's a little bit different. There's a, a little bit different people involved in the hiring process. Um, and then once you're hired, what's the work like? Who are you working with and what are you referencing? Um, right. and, and then um, what is the final product of each one? What are you, what are you delivering for each stage? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. yeah, I think the pitch, pitch is probably the, you know, obviously the first stage that I, uh, I think people need to know because I think a lot of people get confused, you know, like, okay, I'm just going to, uh, you know, I'm just going to do this kind of art and uh, you're going to get hired on a film and it doesn't really quite work like that. And I think, so for pitch phase, uh, it's, you know, you're working with a production designer, uh, you're working with a probably usually a little more smaller limited crew, uh, just because, uh, they just need some pieces of art to get this movie greenlit. But that phase is usually going to be a lot more blue sky, a lot more idea generation, a lot, uh, a little bit quicker idea generation. Uh, so skill sets would be a little bit more like uh, more speed painting, uh, more ideas, uh, epic shots, you know, things that they can sell, right? Mm -hmm. They can bring it to this meeting and they can sell it to people to get the funding. Um, so having it look really good is important. But usually at pitch phase, it doesn't necessarily uh, end up in the movie. Not necessarily. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. So that for that phase, if you had some of those skills that were uh, that allow you to iterate quickly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you still use three D, but maybe not quite as much. It depends on the property. It depends on the film. But that's usually how pitch, you know phase work and it, and it usually lasts maybe a month or two it's a short term it's a shorter term kind of thing um so so, so in this phase you have a couple key players you have you know, the producer and the director and a production designer mm -hmm. and then do you have an art director in at, at this point it depends on how big uh you know like on a big film that's trying to be pitched and they, they you know they have maybe say you know, four or more. The reason why there's an art director involved is because the production designer can't deal with all of the people and all the assignments and, and he needs help. Um, so that's a lot of times an art director comes in and helps disseminate the information from the production designer to the artists, you know? Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the size of the crew. Uh, and, uh, and it depends on the production designer because some production designers like to do it all themselves and some people like need to have an intermediate person. So it depends. Yeah. And how many, and, and so then I guess, of course, the number of concept artists working on a particular pitch 
can depend to. Yes, usually it's going to be a smaller crew just because the budget's tight. Mm -hmm. It's never even for big films is they don't have like a huge huge budget. They'll say, "Well, we've allotted this amount of money. Go hire some artists. Let's create some art and let's get this movie greenlit." Uh, whereas in pre-production, it's like, okay, we ha we already got greenlit and we have this amount of money already. Right. Yeah. So then, what what's like what's what's a small team? For a studio movie, and what's a big team of concept? Well, I mean, small team can it can be anywhere from like uh, you know one or two people to ten people, uh, ten plus people. It depends. Yeah, it really depends. Yeah. yeah. Um, and but then, usually it's in the realm of around maybe three or four. You know? And then what what is uh, what is like a, a typical concept artist in this stage working at big movies make? On a job. Sure. So what, what, what would what would uh, a, someone on a team like this get paid? What would they get paid? Yeah. Are there are there uh, standard union rates? Well, that depends. I mean, does the then it be, you know like I think let's save that for the union talk okay. because there, there's a, a you know that kind of goes within that uh, because there's a range, but it's also governed by if you're in the union or if you're not and your level. Um, so there's a lot. That, that's a bigger. That's a, that's a sliding. <laughs> that's a, a grander sliding scale than than others. Yeah, we definitely will cover that because I think a lot of people wonder, well, you know, how much, you know, how would you know what what can you expect from this kind of a, you know like what can you make? Sure. And right. I don't. It is not a secret, uh, and it shouldn't be a secret uh, because it's just you know it's you know you have a certain level and you should make a certain amount of money. Um, and I think uh, it's all just fair. Uh, so that's information that we definitely yeah, we should, should talk about. But at that, um, yeah. and that's that's a really good thing to note that um, pitch concept art is covered by the union, um, which we will discuss later. Uh, it, it, it can be, and it, it, it's it's the gray area. Got it. Okay. It's it's this gray area. But I mean, you know, we can discuss the phases, and then we can go into the the, the big gray area. That's this thing. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Um, okay, so you've got a group of, you know, one or two guys working directly with a production designer who hired you. And, right. and he hired you either from from your portfolio or from networking, from past relationships, um, being so on his team. Usually, you know, and, and this will be true basically of everything. It's like, obviously, the key number one thing is uh, people are going to ask, well, how do I get on this film? How do I get on a show? How do I meet production designers? How do I, you know? how it's just this you know sort of void and you know how you do that obviously is by having you know great work and and social networking but you know usually a lot of production designers when they come on a show on pitch or pre-production what they'll do is they'll bring their crew right people they've worked with people they trust people that they know they can deliver not always the best artists but people that they trust this is what's important and mm -hmm. people who they like to work with so, you know, it's limiting because they bring in their crew, right? So they have a list of people they will call immediately. But they will go down the list and some of those people won't be work uh, they will will be working and they'll be busy. So then they go, Okay, well, all right, you're busy. Do you know somebody else? That person says, Okay, well my buddy, you know, Emmanuel is free. Mm -hmm. How how would you like to look at the stuff and, and maybe try it out. And then that's how you meet new artists and meet the new, you know, mm -hmm. PDs. And then they, uh, uh, if they hit it off, then they're part of that crew list. Right. I, I, so that's, that's how you really get on. And it's never really, there's no job postings. Right. It's never like, Oh, we're looking for a concept. No, it, it, it will never get to that phase. But so then people go, well, how do we get on the PDs list? And of course, there's strategies for that because you know, like being able to uh, meet these people in you know events uh, online, uh, putting strong work out there where you think they will be, you know, things like that. Of course, that's another you know that's another episode of how to use social networking to really help you um, get your stuff in front of the right people, um, but. I think that, you know, just as information, the PDs have their own crew. Uh, it's hard to break in, but it's not impossible. So then by, by, general, by general terms, 
the pitch phase is one of the most difficult phases to get in on. That's usually the most senior concept artists are jumping in. Uh, that are small. It, it, you know, it really, really, really depends on the show, and it depends on what they're looking for. Uh, I actually think sometimes pitch phases are maybe even easier because, uh, you know, as you'll know later, it's, it's, it's a lot of times the pitch work isn't union work. So they can hire anybody they want because, you know, they, it may be a smaller movie and there's no agreement with the union at that point. They can hire anybody they want. They might like this guy's style mm-hmm. that they see online and they go, well, let's just give it a shot. Yeah. Sometimes the pitch phase doesn't even involve a PD sometimes. So it, it, it's really this thing that you never quite know. Sometimes the studio is handling it and maybe this guy that they like, mm-hmm. they're trying out is, you know, helping facilitate and there's not much feedback. Sometimes that happens. Right. It's, uh, you know, I, I know I'm not painting this like very hardcore, like okay, ABC, but it just doesn't work like that. Right. I think it's good to, to know that there is, there's nuances for each project. Yeah, um, you know, and I think I think you know, sometimes a, a director can be on board for a for a project, develop a project with a studio, and then slide in a new yeah, director. And, right and on the pitch phase, a lot of times, the 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 best part about pitch phase is sometimes you work directly with the director because he's like, you know what, I don't want to deal with PD. It's too early for that. I want to hire some, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like I like this guy and I like that guy. You know, and and that's kind of like, okay, so my friend Eddie, uh, he was uh, on Skull Island, and that's exactly what happened to him. The director said, hey, I like your stuff. You want to just do some pieces for me? Uh, You know, it's for a pitch. And, okay, yeah, let's do it. So now you're working directly with a director, which is the best best thing. That's the best thing, because you're getting it from the horse's mouth. There's no in-between person. And, uh, you know, it could be the best thing. It could be the worst thing. It depends on the director. <laughs> um, well, I want to I wanna just catch us up on some uh, 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 questions from the chat because we, ha- we have some good ones, and I want to make sure that we're, we're answering everyone's thoughts as they come in. Um, uh, Kal- Kalina says, which phase is table tennis? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Hebron's in the room. What up, Hebron? Goosty, um, uh, who, of course, Eman... Uh, Spent some time uh, with live during the Kitmas Bash. Um, uh, Greg asks a couple questions. He asks, um, what kind of rates should you ask for when working on a pitch, and is it possible to work on films not being in the union? Um, great questions. I think um, we're going we're gonna to make sure that we get back to those when we do talk about union stuff later. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't, don't worry. We're going we're gonna to go in depth on those. Um, and then Infinite Divide asks, what is the most common job for non-union hires? Um, also a great question. I promise we're going to get to that. Um, Raja says, um, when you are charging per day as a freelancer, what is the typical output for a day? Um, is it multiple sketches or, um, you know, an, or a finished concept? And is, uh, is working on a piece for two to three days too long, essentially? Um, it, it, okay, so that the. All right, that's quite so specific. So that really depends on, A, the PD, uh, two, the phase you're in. So if you're in pitch art, uh, what they want is, and what I've noticed, okay, and, and, and you know, I'll preface everything by saying it's, it's one of these things where I'm, uh, it's my opinion and what I've been through. So, you know, they, they, you know there, there may be some other people with other experiences, so, just so you know that. But for me, um, working on a p uh, usually I'm doing multiple sketches a day uh, on pitch phases just because they want the most amount of work for the least amount of money because usually in pitch phases like if you're dealing with a lot of directors they're paying out of pocket mm. they're saying I want this movie made I know I need some art and I know I need to pay somebody now you know, how much they're willing to pay, how generous they are, it depends. And if they really like your work, then they'll pay your rate. And I don't, when it comes to that, I don't normally go above or beyond. I, 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 I'd I stay at my rate, and unless that, you know, project is something I really want to work on, I may work with a director, but sometimes you get some really, you know, low-ball requests, or you get, like, free work, 
you know, which I am not a proponent of. On, on that uh, thought, do you get a lot of offers that say, hey, come do the pitches for this and then you'll work on the pre-pro side too? Uh, I don't ever get that. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I think I, I've had, I have had that before, but I now I, I mean, basically when I see that, I just, if it's not paid, I'm not working. And what do you think, is that a, a strategy that someone trying to break in should avoid? Should, should that be a red flag? Uh, that is a, yes. And, and, and that also goes in like, okay, when you go union, and you go like at a really, you know, they, they will sell you at a low rate. I mean, that's all union talk. Right. And you know, you shouldn't do that because, uh, you know, it'll take you forever to get that to a reasonable rate. So I will get to that, okay. uh, rates and all that. I, I mean, I actually even think rates might be a whole episode on their own, you know, rates and what to expect and how to talk to these guys, but let's see if we can get to that. Okay. You know? Yeah. I love that idea too. So um, let's just get to like, Let's just get the stages out of the way. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So in in let's yeah let's talk about the art here. In the in the pitch phase, they're looking for really sellable images. They're looking for the just the 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 big bang kind of stuff that can take you into the world in in one grasp. And when do maybe do you want to pull up some some artwork that you have um, queued up about the stage? Sweet. So yeah. So so this is. Uh, um, I'm just going to scroll through some of the artwork and, and briefly just, you know, like, so this is for a Korean director uh, <clears throat> doing a uh, film that's, I think he's going to film it next year. But what he, so this is where I worked with the director directly. And he said, he gave me the brief. He showed me whatever he needed to show me. Sometimes it's a, it's a couple of script pages. If there's no script, then it's just the story. He's t- talking to you about it and references. And then he's saying, okay, look, I need this, this, that. Uh, but you're working with the director, and he paid me personally for this. Mm. And for this director, he had no, he, you know, he was just like, okay, this is your rate, no problem. And you know, how many days? Okay, fine. And so you work with them, and you you know get them um, you know whatever they need, and you move on. So uh, this one, so it's a little bit uh, for him. He just needed sort of one illustration that kind of uh, could he could bring to meetings and. Can festival and sell, you know, his idea. Yeah, uh, but uh, so, a lot of times well, so, for like. Sorry, you know, on, on on that on that project, um, he's he was delivering sort of, or you were delivering a, a digital packet for him essentially that he would then at can or whatever go show people on his computer. Well, I, mean, I just I just gave him the the illustration. Gotcha. Um, and and that's all all he needed. But like, say this this was like just some quick sort of ideations for like, uh, you know, and I, I think I did like, you know, maybe two, three of these a day, you know, like these were just like half hour, one hour, two hour studies of, you know, what the spacewalk could be for the passengers, uh, the movie. Uh-huh. Uh, and this was like way before they didn't even have an actor at, at that time. They were thinking about Keanu Reeves as being an actor <laughs> in this thing. So it was so early on, it was like they were pitching it to get money. But these were all printed huge in that meeting room to try to get it funded, right? So they need some art that looks the way they want it to look. And, and so, so to paint this picture better, there's they're printing these out and putting them up on the wall. So almost like an art gallery when, when, the, when the client they're pitching walks in, they can yeah. walk through the world and see. Right. It. So you have to be, as an artist, you have to be capable uh, of not only ideating, but, you know, coming up with ideas that, that, that are a little bit more on the, uh, epic sellable side, mm. you know, you're not figuring out the nuts and bolts. You're really just coming up with the grand ideas. And a lot of people think, Oh, this is great. This is, you know, this is what I want to do. This is the most fun stage. You, you could be right. But at the same time, it, you can run across a lot of those issues we're talking about where directors don't really want to, uh, pay, you know, it's all in their pocket, so they don't want to pay thousands and thousands of dollars, uh, you, know, to, you know, for you to do this. And then they're going, oh, can you hurry up and give me more, say, quicker, quicker, because they're paying. You're on the clock. Mm-hmm. you got that worry to worry about because uh, it's, sometimes it's not union. So there's, there are ups and downs. Um, these are uh, done, like, many years ago for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Nice. And this is just, like, super... Like, okay, give us, uh, these were like one of the days, 
um, you know, one illustration a day. This one may be a little bit longer uh, because it went through a couple iterations, but, you know, just stuff that they think that they need. Yeah. Um, um, Droki in the chat says, I love this piece so rad. He was talking about the passenger stuff. Uh, Raja asks, um, do you think directors want to see more realistic types of work? Um, like how the final frame should look or rather more painterly? Um, I think uh, painterly is definitely. Uh, I, I directors want to see what their film looks like always. Like that's usually never ever going to uh, uh, change. Uh, how realistic that depends um, on the director, right? So if, if you're showing something like say Blade Runner, if you're showing something to Denis, he's going to want to see it real. He's going to see want to see it not in the most uh, look at me lighting. Uh, so like, so something like this is probably wrong. Um, so, you know, and that's probably why it didn't get picked. I mean, he, he likes things that are more real, a little bit more subtle and subdued, but you have to kind of know that about him before you do that. So he'll like, and he'll like this more. Mm. Um, I, I think in the end though, you know, this is probably more, you know, his, to his sensibilities, but it all has to feel somewhat realistic because they have to see that, that their film can be like that. So it needs a little bit of that. Uh, but, and, and I don't think that, you know, being painterly is okay, but too painterly, it, it kind of will, you know, because making an image look right and, and real is on value and color. It, it, it has no bearing on how painterly it is. If it's really painterly, but it looks really uh, cinematic, that's okay. And, but it depends on the director and PD. You know, they have all their preferences. You know, some people really like the photo reel, and some people like loose. It just depends. You have to be flexible, I think. Super awesome question, Raja. Thank you. Um, please, everyone in the chat, keep them coming. Uh, Christo Crawford says, yep, love that mood. Spastic Mouse says, feels like rapture from Bioshock. Um, Crystal Crawford also asks, um, during the pitch, do you ever get to read the screenplay or is it purely based off a brief? Uh, you do, uh, if, uh, okay, a couple of things is that, uh, 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 just to preface everything is like, you will have to sign an NDA no matter what show you work on. Um, but even then, uh, sometimes they don't release the scripts because, you know, obviously it's, you know, it's confidential. Uh, if there is a script, they will either sh let you read the screenplay or they will let you read the script pages, um, you know, that pertain to the set that you're doing. And if there's no script, then you'll get the lowdown from the PD or the director. So that's usually how that happens. Um, and, and JD asks, um, you know, the pitch, the pitch, is the pitch phase more keyframe art focused? Uh, <clears throat> it depends because uh, if the director is fixated on showing a uh, ship, uh, you know, uh, and he wants that shown on his pitch, then that's what you show. Uh, but I think usually it is more keyframe based because they, they want to show a story. They want to sell a story to the, to the client and, you know, they want something that's like, Oh yeah, I got some, something happening, you know, just like, you know, just like this is a, you know, pass, you know, this is a spacewalk where they do the romantic thing outside of the ship. So when they take this frame, they can actually sell it and say, that's what's happening and you get it. So, uh, versus, you know, showing the ship because the ship is not important at that point. So, mm -hmm. so, so yeah, looking for uh, the, the, the key frame, so, yeah. the essence of the project. Yes. The essence. The essence. Um, well, uh, so you want to go to pre-pro? I'd love to, if I, I know we're, we're, sh we're, we're spending a lot of time on this, but I'd love to, if, if you, if you wouldn't mind spending just a little bit more time. Well, okay. Well, let's, I'd, I'd oh, love to just talk okay. about Blade Runner a little bit. If we could right. talk, if we could talk about, um, you know, so these these pieces, every, everyone in the chat said, you know, Arthur said I could stare at this one the whole day, and Kalina's talking about how lovely the colors in the in the damn one were. Could we could we go to that one, the the fog wall? Oh, okay. um, yeah. Can we talk about on on this specific one? What was the brief, and how did you how did you land on this? Well, I mean, you know, this was just part of uh, um, one of the sets that that needed to be sort of not quite figured out, but just, you know, like, uh, uh, fleshed out a little bit. Uh, and, you know, the, the production designer at the time, Aaron, told me, hey, look, you know, we have this seawall, 
and they're all going over it, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, he, he would tell me the story, you know, Kay's going that way, and, you know, there's three of them, and, uh, you know, why don't you just, you know, and, and you know, it's, the, the city's elevated, it's been elevated by this much, and we're thinking of, you know, at that time, the idea was, we're so high up in the clouds that, you know, you just see the tip tops, you know, of some of the buildings, and the bottom city atmosphere is lighting up the, the the, 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 the fog a little bit and then you've got this huge seawall fog thing you know mm -hmm. and so at that time we, we had elevated everything really high and that was the idea uh, but in the movie actually they, they brought it back down to like sort of low, a lot lower um, but this was yeah that was the brief given to me and then I said okay and then I just kind of went with a quick sketch and I said like this and he goes yeah and so then I just finished painting it up I mean I was really excited so I was just kind of you know, painted it up, uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I, this was one, one of my favorites from there. Uh, and so that, yeah, that's, but a lot of times the, the production designer will guide you at that point to, like, where they think it should go, and they usually, a good production designer will allow you enough room so that you can kind of do what you want as well. Mm. But they'll give you references and say, hey, look, you know, these are things that, that rock me. I like these things. Yeah. So, don't go into it. Uh, and a lot of these things apply to pre-production too. Like don't go into it, you know, working with a production designer expecting it's just your vision. It's right. not. <laughs> yeah. Because you're there to help him sell his vision as a production designer to the director. Right. And if you're, if you're talking straight to the director, then the director is telling you, I want you to help me illustrate this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Sometimes you will have directors that are really open and say, I want what you got, um, and I don't really have any real ideas, so go for it. Give me some ideas. You'll have that too. So it depends who you're talking to and who you're dealing with. So, yeah. Super cool, man. Something, something really awesome just happened in the chat. Um, Greg asked, do you think it's possible to work in films not living in Cali? And then Kalina knew the answer. She said, responds to him, you can work for one of the many VFX studios that work indirectly with Hollywood. So technically, yes. Um, I think it's really well, cool. In yeah, that and you can work in pitch, pre-production, or VFX phases from any with not being in California. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, you know, Emmanuel doesn't live in Hollywood. He lives he lives up in the, in the beautiful San Francisco. Um, yeah, and, and, and I'll, I'll just say that, you know, if, if that then depends on your work. Right. And how good your work is. So, you know, really, uh, it, location is not really a factor anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, think it's, I, I think it's so cool that Kalina chimed in, though, and, and answered a question within the chat. If you guys, you know, have questions that, or if you know the answer to someone else's question, um, talk to each other. As we, we can't iterate or we can't uh, say enough how important it is to build relationships and, and make friends. And I think this chat is a great place that we've seen so much excellent partnerships come out of not not from people on the show necessarily but from people in the chat um so communicate yeah. with each other and use that as a great form kalina asks um was there any 3d in the seawall piece she says the volumetrics are so good in the water i'd love a quick breakdown if he has time without without a without a long breakdown just was there did you use 3d and did you have to deliver assets after that uh for for the seawall yeah yeah. Uh, so this is uh, a combination 3D photo bash paint. Um, so uh, I did not have to deliver 3D because a lot of times in pitch phases, it's not really that nobody really, you know, they're not building anything. They, they don't really care. Um, if they really want that later on, they may come back to ask you, but this wasn't. Uh, so it was just really a combination of, uh, you know, paint and photo, a little bit of 3D. Mm. And do you, uh, do you find that in the pitch phase you are ever delivering 3D assets that can be used? Uh, I typically don't. Mm. I don't think I have. I, I may have, but not typically. It's not typically. They just want an image, and then they want to go to the meeting. You have a meeting you're shooting for usually in the pitch phase. You know, you're shooting for that meeting at that time, uh, in that day, and then you know once that day comes, usually you're done. Like. And then the meeting goes well, and then it's, if it goes well, then it's like, okay, well, now we're off to pre-production. So, great transition, Iman. <laughs> so, we, we're, now we're, the movie got picked up. 
um, or it gets green lit, and now they're 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 in the pre production phase, um, and sometimes there can be a large gap between the concepting and the pitch and the actual pre production work, right? Yes, uh, so it's, it's never usually like one following the other. It's, it, it'll take some time for them to get Greenland. So in which case they call this the hiatus. You know, they, they will go on a break, they, you know, waiting for things to happen. So in film, unfortunately, you're going to get a lot of this hiatus stuff. And it drives a lot of us insane because you're working on something and, oh, script change, uh, take a hiatus for two weeks. You're like, what the hell? Oh. But it's the nature of the business. It's how it is. But definitely between pitch, you know, and the movie being greenlit to uh, like, you know, trying to get it greenlit to having it greenlit. Sometimes it can take weeks, months, years. You don't know. Just so that that I and and we understand what the hiatus factor of that. That could that be a two week hiatus where you're not paid, right? Not paid, yes. And and so then in the, in those stages, what do you, what do you, how do you how do you deal with that? You take a vacation is what you do. Mm. No, I mean you don't really have much of a choice, right. and that's that's sort of you know like a lot of us guys who are freelancing, you know we, you know we just oh shit, you know hiatus again, um, or hey you know, and then you kind of you kind of read between the lines and you kind of go well, is this hiatus going to turn into like. A, it's not going to happen again. Think, do I need to hustle for work again? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. What do I need to do? So then that's when you talk to each other, you know, you ping other people, you see, hey, what's going on? Um, hopefully the production designer clues you in, but, you know, there is that, you know, and, and I will say that in film, uh, if you want stability, this is probably not the area for you to be in. Um, because just because it's just really not super stable. Um, if you are experienced and you know people, then usually you'll have more work than you know what to do with. But even then, it slows down from time to time. Now, the only way to get more stable work is to work in an art department in a vi visual effects house. And that's a whole different ball of wax. Yeah. But it is concept art, but it's a different ball of wax. But I want people to know that because... I, I feel like a lot of people see it as being very glamorous. You know, I'm working in film. It's great. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I'm striving for. But they don't realize that it's, it, it'll take a while to amass the, the contacts and to be able to be hired. I mean, I know people who are in the union who are having a hard time being hired mm -hmm. uh, just because uh, of, you know, you, you know, it could be their skill set and that they're not lucky enough that people need that skill set. Uh, it could be a lot of different, you know, reasons. Or maybe they just want the big projects, but um, it's not the most stable. So you have to be okay with that. Mm. Um, so that's that's really important. So now in pre-production, um, there are the movies. The movies greenlit, and you've got a bunch more players involved in the process now. Now, oh, okay. Let, let, I, I just saw something on the the chat. But I, I want to uh, say one more thing is. If you're on any kind of, I mean, this is just me spewing advice for anybody who wants to listen, but if you're on hiatus, if you've got free time, for me, that's when I go, okay, immediately, no, you know, taking a break, yeah, sure, but I, I also really want to up my game. I mean, that's really time to up your game, you know, learn that new piece of, you know, go learn that new piece of software real quick if you need to. Uh, uh, you know, do something, you know, get yourself more prepared if it comes back. Uh, go search around for what movies are coming out, you know, uh, what directors might be looking at what, who, you know, like, don't just sit there and go, ah, oh, well, <laughs> free right. time. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, go to the beach. Yeah, you know, do a day of that, but then do more, you know, use that time wisely. You know? Yeah, and to, to allow that, um, to allow yourself to, to build your portfolio or to, to make that piece or to go to a, go to a festival or engage with some, some people and build your network. Um, I think that, that, that to me, I think is one of the crucial steps of a freelancer is how much, um, how much can you drum up on your own and how much can you use the little time, even if it's, even if it's an hour waiting on a render to, to hustle, you know, to go out and find, to find new stuff and to find new opportunities to, to make things happen. 
Yeah, I, and, and you know, it's always on that. You know, it's always on you to make your stuff better and use the time wisely. So, all right, pre-production. Pre-production, yes. So we've got now we've got um, for sure an art director in the mix, um, and then you're going to be you're going to be passing things off, or are you are you 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 tell us? Okay, so pre-production basically it's a simple put this. Okay, greenlit movies greenlit. The production designer says, I'm going to hire a team of artists to help me figure out this film. That simple, right? So in this phase, you're figuring out stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, anywhere from, uh, so this is from Spider-Man. Um, so he says, okay, uh, I need a set. I need the Oscorp lobby. It needs to have a hologram there. We're going to build this set. Go. You mm -hmm. know, this is the mm -hmm. story point, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. So I do this image and they go, all right, uh, that's expensive. That's going to be over a million dollars to build this set. We can't do that. We don't have the money for that. Close it in uh, and make it cheaper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then, okay, I close it in and make it cheaper. And they go, okay, we can do that. Uh, and then, oh, hand us the 3D model. We'll take it to the set designer, set dress, uh, you know, the, the, the guy who does all the set blueprints and he'll figure out from what you have to the real thing. And then it gets built. So then a, a, a key difference between pitch and pre-pro is pitches is the big ideas and pre-pro is the, the actual tiny nitty, the tiny details that will eventually be taken by a set designer and brought into CAD and, and actually made to the blueprint you drew. Right. And, and you know, you know, it would be figure out, figure out, you know, figuring out, you know, certain things like say for this one is the, uh, the power plant. And, and so we're trying to figure out how the power is going to go, what does what, uh, you know, and there's iterations and iterations and iterations of things, you know, you're figuring out stuff, you're problem solving, you know, this uh -huh. is a power, that power plant, you know. And, and are these in 3D? These are, uh, some of it, yeah. Some of it? 3D. And would, you, and, would you deliver it? those 3D assets to... Uh, um, they didn't need message. this. I don't, I don't think they needed this, but, you know, because it was clear enough. And uh, But, I, you know, I, I have delivered a lot of this kind of assets. Or, or they say, well, we need... Uh, okay, make an illustration of the suit that's on a stand. Mm. Um, and, and so... Uh, uh, so, okay. So it's on a stand. And then... Um, then I, they say, okay, well... What, what does that stand? You know, what, what is that thing? So, you know, you quickly kind of go, okay, it's on track. And, you know, you, you, it, you know the point here is you, you're trying to figure out stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's the point. Um, so that's, that's the, you know. Yeah, you're trying to, you're trying to draw first what then they will end up building. And then the reason they would do it, have, have a conceptor in, is a concept or iterating and, and making changes is much cheaper than anyone else in the process doing something and having to redo it. Yeah. So, so basically, yeah, uh, it, it, this phase is just, it's whatever they need to make the movie happen. Mm. Um, and because after this phase, the production designer leaves the show, right? After this phase and the sets are built, and, you know, that's their responsibilities end because production designers, they stay through the filming and then that's it. They're done. Right. Sometimes they leave even before the filming. It, it, it just depends because they, they're responsible for the set build if there is a set build, right? Mm -hmm. so, so the PD for this stayed around, you know, for this set to be built um, and, and make sure that there are no issues with it. Uh, and after that, they're gone. Um, so it's whatever they need to figure out. Corey in the chat asks, how much are you thinking about cost for the film when you're concepting? Uh, it depends on the film. Uh, usually it's not a, 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 it's not something you have to be super aware of uh, because the PD will tell you, he'll say, Hey, look, man, you know, like don't go crazy with materials. Uh, you know, don't go crazy with like, uh, you know, making things that can't be built, you know, meaning like uh, tons of, windows looking out to you know a big city you know that's expensive you know don't do that uh like like for you know for this case they, they will look at it and go well too expensive you know they'll tell you right you know? right and, and that's when you learn um as a concept artist oh okay you put it in your head and next time you do something you ask before you say oh how 
expensive is a set build and uh you know should i be aware of anything else yeah um, you know but it, it you know it's really weird because it's like this hollow table i had like half an hour to do it uh because they go oh we need something we need something and then so i just said oh crap okay i just did something uh that was indicative of the architecture of the room that i thought it was going to be in but you know this half an hour this made it to the movie wow it's like you know sometimes you just don't know yeah uh, sometimes you'll spend a month on a set that gets cut so you, it's you have to be okay with that mm-hmm. you know that's the nature of the game uh Droki asks are you always willing to hand off your 3d models is that treated like an added service or a fee um or is that something that's just expected uh, it's expected uh, because that's just kind of part of your language at this point. But I think you know, I always, I always preface it by saying, you know, these are production models, uh, and uh, you know, like these are just my quick work models, and so it could totally be like, you know, it could totally just be a crappy, uh, uh, you know, model, uh, and you have to be okay with that, uh, and they are okay with that. Um, uh, same for PSD files. Sometimes they'll say, "Well, can we have your PSD files?" And I'll say, "Okay, well, just so you know, it's a mess." But you know, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people aren't comfortable handing off PSD files. But I'm like, it, you know, they pay for my time, uh-huh. so that's the, it's theirs, really. Yeah. So they have a right to it, um, uh, to any file that you create, because at that moment. That intellectual property is theirs. Uh, the work you create under their, you know, that uh, that day uh, that they're paying for is theirs. So mm-hmm. you really have no recourse. You know, it's not like I'm not going to give that to you. Right. Yeah. Um, Kalina asks a, a great question that I, I think it'd be really appropriate to scroll through some of your your finished pieces there at, at the top, um, and and talk about the software you use and some of the brushes. Um, and, brushes. Uh, yeah, that's Ar- Ar- Arthur and, and Kalina want to know the the brushes. Um, Infinite Divide says I'm pretty sure he's using Maya. Arthur says Maya or 3ds. Um, All right. So, I mean, in, in terms of um, in terms of software, uh, I'll just say that uh, it's it's usually unimportant uh, when it comes to Photoshop. Obviously, Photoshop's Photoshop. It's fine. Um, when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to when it comes to 3D, it's any software you really. I mean, any software right now can import. Usually, you know, we exchange a lot of OBJs or FBX files, so it's not important uh, what software you use. Um, to be honest, I mean, if you use Moto, fine, Max, fine, Maya, it doesn't matter. As long as you can import certain OBJs, and they are very flexible, they'll work with you. You know, on the file transfer and all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't really matter. You know, as long as you know 3D, that's good, you know. And, and you personally, you're working in Maya and um, are you using Redshift? I'm, uh, right now I'm using V-Ray. V-Ray. Uh, but I mean, I test software all the time to see if there's anything that gives me a boost. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I do that. Uh, but right now it's V-Ray. But I'm also finding alternatives to quicker, things that'll make your stuff go faster. Uh-huh. You know? yeah. Is that, that's the name of the game. Uh Kalina yeah. and Arthur just checked my uh, my sense of humor. Brushes was a joke. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Well, before we before we move on, could we um, could we take a closer look at at uh, some of these images? Uh, maybe start at the top there. Um, so these are some of the Thor images. So you know, obviously, uh, uh, Thor is a um, uh, a lot of it was green screen. So you know, a lot of it is not a set build. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but you know, at this point, it was still early, and they were trying to discover what the you know salvage yard was going to be, you know, where he where he crash lands, um, and so you know, to, and then the the city that was like super uber colorful, the Sakar. So you know, we we're just trying to figure out what the hell it is. Yeah. Uh, and you know, at that point, it's just like throwing ideas out. Uh, you know, and and within even the pre production phase, they'll be like. Uh, talking, um, they'll need you know the director needs to make. Uh, he needed to talk to Marvel on a, like a regular basis. So what he'll have is presentation uh, days where he shows Marvel all the work. So you know you're shooting for those days within you know that time. But usually on a film like this, it's a it's a longer period of time for design. Mm-hmm. Um, usually, uh, you know, like three to five months. Um, so. 
you know, but that's, yeah, that's some of the stuff for mm-hmm. it. Um, but these are just quick ideas and generation like, Oh, we have a stadium. What does it look like? What can it be? You know, uh-huh. okay, give us some ideas. And, and then you're working that idea. And then if they like it, then you flesh it out more. You know? Yeah. And then you're, you're showing work every day. Um, so, so showing work, uh, that's, between you and the PD, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like your schedule, I tend to not like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, personally, I don't like, I like being able to have a little time to sit with something. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so I, but usually at the first time of working with a PD, you have to work it, work that out because they, they don't trust you yet. But yeah. now, you know, cause I, I remember a PD, uh, that I, you know, they'd be like asking, Hey, you got to drop stuff every day, you know, like work in progress, whatever. And I hate, showing work in progress right so uh so i worked enough where i kind of pushed the deadline a little bit always a little bit and i told him hey this is how i work and but you know by our second film it was like he never there was no talk of when you need he knew how i worked Uh and he knew that i would be good for it yeah no questions but you have to build that trust up yeah such an important note on on really any creative endeavor is about members of the team knowing one another and understanding how how each person is different, you know, in, a, in an art form, that's that's the whole thing of expression, isn't it? Yeah, uh, and, but you know, it's it's just one of those things where you have to really, uh, you know, it's just working with people, and and you know, it goes back to the whole whole conversation of, uh, you know, who the who his crew list is. He's going to hire people he thinks are easy to work with and you can trust. Mm-hmm. So it's the bond you build. You know, if you think you you have a big ego and he feels that, he's probably going to hire somebody who's less skilled than you but easier to work with, mm-hmm. versus somebody who's super egotistical but is great artist. So you know, you have to really you know, it's part. You know, there's a big part of that is personality mm-hmm. um, and just you know, getting what they're saying that's important and easy to work with and dependable. Like if you have those things, you're going to be valuable and you don't have to be the greatest artist in the world to, to to be valuable to that production designer. Mm. So, I mean, that's, that's my, how, how I see it. Yeah. Um, well, we are, we are running close to our time. Would it be all right, Iman, if we go about 10 minutes over? Yeah, but let's, let's go to VFX. That, now. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking too. Okay. Um, I would love to, to really so, break that down. So I, if, if at this phase, you know, we you know, we're figuring it out. They're, they've built a set, they filmed it, all right? It's all filmed, it's in the can, but now they go, well, we're gonna put in visual effects now. You mean, and just one, one question that, that rolled over that I just want to address. Um, Water Shallows Where asks, can Eman explain the pros and cons of some of the render engines he uses? Um, it's a great question, and we do, um, we only have Eman here once a month, and in between, um, E-Man's uh, episodes, we do all sorts of cover breakdowns um, for all the, the kits and all, all sorts of uh, episodes where we have guests and we talk a ton about render engines. So if we can, I'd love to stay on, on task with E-Man about the professionalism of being a concept artist and we want to get uh, into the, the details of breakdowns and things like that. Um, please tune in with us in, uh, in weeks to come because there's all sorts of information on that. Um, but yes, v- so, v- so VFX, the movie's been made and now we're working... We're working with a, a VFX soup, not a PD, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So when it comes to visual effects, uh, the the person you're dealing with is a visual effects supervisor for that company, right? So uh, that's that's usually the hierarchy. And and in visual effects, uh, you know, whether it be MPC, Frame Store, Atomic Fiction, whatever place, whether uh, they all have a small crew on their team. Um, that deal with art related stuff. The smaller the company, the smaller the crew, it depends. Um, but that is a place where you can pick up a lot of uh, experience and a lot of film work. Uh, and it's, it's more stable because it's, you're actually being hired by a company. So that's the, the really plus side. But the design work that you get to do on these films is a little bit different than the pre-pro pitch phase stuff mm-hmm. because it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of figuring out the stuff that was left behind, right? So meaning, uh, oh, the script was rewritten a little bit. We need a, a, now we need a ship or a castle we didn't think about. Mm -hmm. Go and do that. 
because mm-hmm. they, they, they're not going to hire a production designer and a whole crew just to do that one thing. So they're, they're going to say, you're the effects house, you guys figure it out. And that happens a lot. So, you know, it's, it's like, uh, uh, so a good example would be, uh, let's see. So I'll just run through these really quickly. Yeah. Cool. Um, so this is Game of Thrones, um, which subsequently Max was the one who did the uh, map painting for this. Um, but I was just given like a small set photo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said, well, put in mountains around it. Okay, put a camp that's kind of like was on fire with dirty snow. And you do a version and they go, okay, that's it. That's it. That's the one we want. And then so that goes to like a map painter like Max. And then he map paints it. And then, you know, it's just, uh, that's kind of the way it goes. But, you know, you'll do this quite a bit um, in VFX. And this is the sort of the more fun part. So this is another uh, Game of Thrones where the middle of it is like a plate. And they say, well, we need to extend the camp and it needs to be a base of a valley and all that kind of stuff. And you do it. But it needs to look pretty real, right? It can't look like totally you know, brushed and, 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 and super uh, painterly because they, they need this. This is the last stage. They need, they need to help their artists uh, see what this can look realistically. They're going to follow this and make the shot. You mean um, be, because it's a, a fun story, um, I just want to show the, uh, the matte painting that Max did. So off of that first image that E-Man showed, um, this is where it ended up. And if you look at the the piece that the max matte painted compared to what Eman started with, you can really see the whole process. You know, and here's here's what they ended up shooting based off of what Eman painted first. Then they ended up shooting this, and then in 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 VFX they had Eman figure out exactly what that was going to look like, and you can see the progression of that image. Um, so that's the plate I got actually. <laughs> this plate. Uh, the one you had just before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, these are the plates that I got too. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the plate I got. And then that's the image that I made from that plate. Right. Really a, a cool little um, connection that happened years ago between between Max and Ema. Um, yeah, we didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah, super, super rad. And I think it's it's great to see your work and how, how much... Of, a, of the actual blueprint that that ended up on the screen you know you you created the thing that then everyone from there came in and and made come to life based off of what was in your head um, I, I was just reading the chat real quick and, yeah. and, and I thought this was one question I don't think I've ever really been asked um, Kalina says well after a while uh, do you get jaded from the amount of projects you've worked on um, and and I, I mean, I just want to address that really quickly yeah. saying, no, no, I don't. Um, because I'm really excited to be working on any film uh, that, you know, I, I love this stuff. So I'm not, I think it's, it's, a, it's great. I mean, there are issues with every career and every, uh, uh, you know, scenario. But I, I think that, you know, you try to make it work. But I'm always looking to do the next film that I feel strongly about that I like. Uh, some of them turn out good. Some of the some of them don't. But I I would say I'm very uh, I'm still very excited and positive about working in the industry. And if I wasn't, I probably wouldn't work in it. Mm. You know, and that's all there is to that. So all right, let's continue well, and, this. And, you know, the be- the beauty of freelance is if you do get jaded, take time off and go do something yeah, else. It, well, yeah, that is the beauty of freelance is that you know it's only you know like if you're on this project and it's really crap, it's probably for two months. You can deal with two months, but if you're at a company and you're really not digging it, it could be years. Yeah. So you know that's how I see it, and I love the the, the amount of things that you see that are different. You know, the variety. You know. Yeah. Um, so this is an example of like After Earth, this movie. Well, not uh, in my opinion, not the best movie, but uh, so this is what I get. You know, is a green screen, and then the, the visual effects group says, "Hey, I need a cockpit. Uh, not a cockpit, like a cargo bay." They're sitting there. I need that. So then you take that and you make something out of you know the architecture that they're thinking. And 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 so this in this particular place is like three D and um, uh, paint. But you know you can see it's like you know version seven. I mean, there's 
you do versions upon versions upon versions, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, and, and visual effects work is a lot of that. It's a lot of that. Um, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of show me some projectiles. I, we need a projectile. Can you show me versions of projectiles? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's visual effects work because usually visual effects is the one that does this, right? You can't shoot this for real because it doesn't exist and you can't do that. So they're going to say, well, design something so that, our uh, particle guy can do that and you know you know whoever td effects td needs to do this mm-hmm. and so you have to design stuff like this i mean this is you have to be aware that if you're a visual effects concept artist you know you know visual effects house that there's a lot of this right and you have to be okay with that uh, like there's gonna be a lot of wormholes <laughs> and <laughs> things that need to be figured out you know like for their crew right and that, um, that's the essence of VFX, right, is is all the things that don't exist in the real world. Yeah, and they're gonna, you know, and and, and their artists, their particle guys, their TD effects TDs are gonna be like, we're great at making the thing, but we don't know what the thing should look like. We can technically help you get there, but you gotta show me what this wormhole is. Mm-hmm. Then I can make that. But so that's how you're helping them. That's your job. Uh, they, you know, they are not artists, just like you're not coders and you don't understand how to like, you know, make the shot happen. They're not, you know, they're not trying to be artists and figure out, you know, artistically what it should look like. So you're there helping each other, you know, and they're usually in another department and you talk to them and you show them this, and you know, so, you know, yeah. so that's, that's usually the, uh, you know the, the the relationship. You know when you're in a if a, you know in a visual effects house, mm-hmm. uh, but it's a really good way to start your career in concept art because uh, you get to touch a lot of films in a short amount of time. Uh, you learn from somebody because you're in house, um, and it's a stable job where you don't have to stress out or worry about hustling for work. And you'll meet a lot of people there. Mm-hmm. that will end up being major players in the field uh, or will know major players in the field and you're getting a lot of experience. So it's always a good thing, but they don't have a huge art department. Most companies don't have a huge art department, so it's not that easy to get into. Right. You can freelance for them too, but it's the same. Then it's the same story. You know, It's not a stable job. But you think that if you're, if you're just getting into the game or, or you've been in the game but you want to really focus on, on movies... VFX is is the place. If you were just starting, you would start at. You would start hunting there. Um, I think if you're okay with it, I think that is definitely an avenue I would look at because I feel like uh, for a lot of people starting off at first, um, it, it's something tangible they can apply. They can see the company. They can talk to people there. You know, like. Whereas in, you know, the pitch phase and the pre-production, you know, even after we've talked this long about it, a lot of them are probably wondering, well, who do I talk to then? Mm -hmm. How do I get in? Right. After all this, it's just, you know, now you know the structure that the next thing is figuring out, well, who do you talk to? Yeah. You might have the best work, but who do you, you know, how do you get it in front of them? You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, Iman, and tell me, tell me if, if you feel differently, but I'm, I'm thinking we take that whole conversation and make that the next episode. I know we had, we had some thoughts for what the next episode would be after this, but I think if we include some of the, the hiring and, and networking and rates and probably even start. Well, and, and the union the, talk, because yeah. that, that is the huge thing because, you know, it's just, just to, to introduce that really, really quickly is that, you know, so the Art Directors Guild is the, uh, and you can look that up, is adg.org. It's just a, 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 a union for illustrators and map painters. Uh, and uh, there's probably one classification in there I, I forgot. But, uh, but if you're an illustrator or a map, map painter, you're going to need to be part of this union if you want to work on a lot of Hollywood films. Because mm-hmm. um, I think a lot of people are wondering, what is this union? Well, that's important because... You know, a lot of films nowadays still don't hire out of the union. So um, there needs, there are strategies to get in. It's incredibly difficult to get in. Um, but there's also a lot of films also hire non-union. So it's, you know, especially if you're in Poland, um, they'll hire you. It's not a problem because you're out of the jurisdiction. But that's, you know, 
that's a whole talk, you know, how, you know, what's their salary range, you know, like what can you expect them to be making when you're freelancing? Because you have to factor that in because if you're not working for two months, then you better charge accordingly. You don't have benefits, so you better charge accordingly. Yeah. But if you're in the union, you'll have benefits. So this is a lot of stuff. You know? Yeah, I think um, I'm, I, I want to be so, so respectful of your time and I, I can't, I couldn't be more excited and honored that you want to come and spend this hour a month here with us and with this community. Um, I know on, on behalf of the whole community, we're so excited to have you. I want to make sure that we don't go too over time now, but, but we have so much more that we're going to, we're going to talk about and, uh, things we can break down in the weeks to come. Um, I did just want to, there were a couple, couple questions, sort of big picture questions for you that came in the chat. Droki says, um, at this stage in your career, how much are you deciding on projects you are excited about versus people you want to work with? versus filling the schedule say again sorry um how wh how what do you what do you value when picking a project do you is it projects that you're excited about or people that you're excited about or filling the schedule at this point uh, in your career? for me it's usually about it's it's uh for me the hierarchy now is working with the people i want number one um you know working with really nice people so no matter how big the project i'm always going to ask Who's, who's the PD, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'll ask around if they're nice, if they're stressed out people, if they, you know, and I'll evaluate whether I want that, mm -hmm. you know. But first thing is, you know, working in an environment where it's, in, it's conducive to making good art, which means you work with a collaborative, nice person. Yeah. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, uh, uh, then it becomes the project. What project is this? It's, you know, honestly, the project is not even that important to me anymore. I could work on a film that, you know, nobody hears about, but have the most fun working on. Uh -huh. I don't care. It's, but then you, you could work with a guy who's awesome and, the, you know, the subject is awesome. It's just not a big budget movie. Who cares? Or right. vice versa. You could go work on Guardians of the Galaxy and the, the guy's an asshole. I mean, you want to do that? Then, yeah, that's on you. But I, I, I personally would pick the small project with the cool guy. Yeah. So Great. that's my biggest priority now. You know? Yeah, it's having quality, quality of life, and that's so important is who you choose to spend your time with. Yeah. Um, and Chris Boyan, Bojan asks, uh, do you still matte paint, or is it just concepts? Uh, just concepts at this point. Um, I haven't matte painted in, in like eight, nine years, ten years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, matte painting is, it's not, you, you can do it. It's just that it's, it's, uh, I don't like to spend that long on something right now. Um, and it's just all 3D now. So it's not how it used to be. How it used to be, I like, you know, impressionist thing. But now it's just like 3D, you know, yeah. to the nth degree. So, yeah. Um, well, I want to I want to announce one really cool thing that we are going to um, do for next time um, and, and the time in between next time. Um as we go on and we start talking about um, how to get hired and, and look in the, the details more of how that's going to work, um, Eman will do a portfolio review at the end of the show. Um, so later on today on our Facebook, we are going to post a thread that has, um, uh, that, has that, that you can then reply to with your portfolio. Eman has, has uh, requested that along with your portfolio, you give a little mission statement saying, um, you know, what it is that, what kind of work you want to do. And um, if you haven't watched this full episode, um, do that uh, and get a good look at the, the three types of, of movie work that, that is out there. And if, you, if you're trying to um, get more work in the Hollywood movie scene, um, this is a great opportunity for you to, to have one of, the, one of the greats take a look at your work and, um, and help you figure out um, a marketing strategy. But in your submission with this on the thread, reply with a link to your portfolio as well as um, a couple sentences that say what kind of work um, you want to be doing um, and and why and anything else you think that uh, that might be interesting um, uh, to, to get you looked at. And then we're going to pick one and at the end of the show next week um, or possibly even at the beginning of the show, it might be a cool way to kick it off not next week, also next month, um, when we have Eman back for episode three of How to Be a Professional Concept Artist, um, we, will, uh, we will take a look at that. So 
Um, okay, well, and one more thing is like uh, for all the guys out there uh, who find this helpful, share this as much as possible. Um, I, you know, I, I put it on my feeds and I tell people, you know, because this is for all the people out there to benefit from. Um, so the more people that we can share, the more people that will see this and then they can understand what this is all about. And that's why I'm doing this, you know. Um, so just, you know, it, it's, it's easy to say, oh, well, you know, I, I'm going to be at the, the live thing. Just, but share it, you know, share it will help others um, that may not know about it, you know. Hey man, would you stop screen sharing so in this wrap up we can we can see your face? My face. Your face, man. Um, see my face. Yes, I think that is that is such a, a, a an awesome point, and you know why we are doing this show, and why um, Emmanuel is um, so graciously sending, spending his time here with us is um, it was something that E man said the very first time we spoke um, when we first started about doing the Kipness, uh, the Kipash 3D Festival. Um, when we launched was he said, you know, I have all of this information and there isn't really a great resource online to tell people how to be a professional concept artist. And I would love to, um, spend some more time and, and, and give back to, to this community of, of all these new young artists who are trying to get out there and, and break into the field or, or, um, progress their career. And, and, uh, I think this is such an awesome thing that, that you're doing here with us, um, so yes, please, uh, if, uh, if you're digging this thing, um, uh, share it. Uh, the videos are being hosted on YouTube. You can go look at our YouTube channel. Um, Emans from last month is up there, um, and this one should be up um, pretty soon as well. Um, I believe they're also on Facebook, um, and uh, you can share them, you can share the event, um, tell your friends about it, sit down with two of your friends and watch the thing, while you have uh, a cup of coffee. <laughs> um, Please. Yeah, well, everyone, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us in the chat. Thank you for your comments and your questions um, and your enthusiasm. Get out there and go make something awesome. Uh, E-Man, thank you a million times for... All right, well, I'll see you guys next month, and make sure if you put the portfolio, tell me why I should look at it and why, you know, what you want to do. Okay, so that's going to be very important. <laughs> yep, there you go. So yeah, put pitch pitch yourself and practice that, um, and see. Yeah, because uh, you're going to have to do that at some point. <laughs> yeah, and have have passion about this. This this stuff is is a, a competitive industry, but it, it reaps incredible artistic rewards if you have the the courage to go after it. Um, Sweet. On that note, thanks everyone very much. Right. We'll, we'll see you guys in a month. Take care.